I'm John Opera. I'm an artist and photographer, and I'm currently based in Buffalo, New York. I think in my work I've always been addressing this preoccupation I have with photography's relationship to phenomena. So historically or traditionally, the relationship of, of the camera to what it records, I would say is, is a pretty external relationship in the sense that the camera is always positioned in front of and separate from the thing it's recording in the world. My work has, over time, really um, become, I think, more and more reductive. There was a, a time right before I stopped making photographs uh, where my subjects were very simple, the sun, a window blind, and it was this thing that was happening where I was becoming less interested in what cameras have the ability to record uh, and more interested in thinking about photography as a way to also not just record phenomena but in include it in the very act of bringing a photographic representation into the world. And, and that's when I really started embarking on these light bulb works and, and thinking about what underlies photography itself. And for me, this is a move towards a much more internalized and therefore abstract way of thinking about photography and human perception. Because I'm thinking about photography in a pretty unorthodox way, I found that in order to get the results that I'm looking for, I often have to create my own apparatuses to achieve my goals. So one of the tools that I've used a lot over the last five or six years comprises a light bulb suspended over a turntable. And so what I can do is rotate the canvas and change the orientation of the bulb on the XY axis over an extended period of time in the realm of 10 to 15 hours, typically. I really see these not necessarily as images of a light bulb, but I really look at them as a kind of timepiece and some of them even resemble clock faces. They, they resemble watches. And I, I really think that's quite appropriate for how they come into being. But the image uh, is not derived from a camera recording something in the world. The image is derived by using photographic materials um, to create something maybe more akin to a painting. This really is an image of pure time. I think one of the most important ideas behind my work has to do with the relationship of the apparatus to the medium of photography. And I think about my work as existing within this, this kind of understanding that the tools I design have very specific outcomes. And the outcomes are directly related to how the apparatus is configured. And I think about this in terms of photography as a whole, as an institution, in the sense that all of photography is more or less configured to mimic human sight. And so a lot of the questions I think my work poses is what happens to a medium that's so closely linked to perception in how we visually interface with the world, what happens when you alter that model or alter the whole organization of the principles? And I think what I'm doing in my work is continually searching for images that I feel reflect back onto the medium uh, in some kind of symbolic way, but essentially provide the viewer with a new possibility around what constitutes or makes up photographic space.
So during the course of making the radial compositions, I basically realized what I was also creating were interference or diffraction patterns. And these kinds of visual expressions have very profound connections to how light behaves and how it works and what we know about it. And so that kind of thinking led me to, to really explore diffraction more deeply. And it started with the tilted oval works. So with these pieces, I'm projecting high-powered laser light through various pieces of antique glass that I've collected over the years. And what results on the other side are psychedelic patterns uh, and, and very uncontrolled diffraction. The tilted oval is at once a reference to pretty traditional framing conceptions of the 19th century. Cyanotype, after all, was invented in 1840. And throughout the 19th century, we see photographs presented not as rectangles, but as ovals. So there's something window-like and, and almost uh, portal-like about the presence of this kind of frame for me. And the other interesting thing that's happening with this work, I think, is the curiously kind of inverted relationship that exists with paint and photographic reality. And with really all of my cyanotype on canvas works, there is a painting component. With these works, I'm making marks using photographic chemistry, and I'm using paint as a way to reference back to framing, selecting, and extracting images out of the world, similarly to how a camera functions. So with, with my latest work, I am returning to photography in a more traditional sense since I'm once again using a camera and I'm shooting on film. And so these new photographs are created by projecting light directly into the camera and the lens is actually removed from the camera. And I'm achieving these photographs by going back and utilizing a pretty established method for generating and recording diffraction patterns that was mostly present in textbooks. But in looking at these photographs, I couldn't help not to think that I could improve upon them aesthetically, that they really felt like very ordinary images of something that I felt was otherwise unfathomably extraordinary. And so my method for making these is to not just use one kind of laser, but several different types of lasers that are different colors. So I'm really accessing uh, a kind of RGB full color spectrum array of light. So the photographs begin with uh, basically matching an aperture to a laser color. And these apertures are anywhere from one to two millimeters in diameter. So for example, I will project a red laser beam through this aperture and the event will be projected inside of the camera. And additionally, what I'm doing is adding other light contaminants that complicate 
and expand upon uh, the color scheme. And so on top of that, during developing the film, I employ the Sabatier effect, which is commonly referred to as solarization. So it's kind of this balance between a very precise recording of a light event, and I take it into the dark room and completely disrupt that and introduce an uncontrolled light event. So I think what essentially is happening with these images is I'm building upon this very traditional, almost bland scientific illustration. And I'm presenting these images in a way that I feel really reflect and reinforce their kind of unfathomable magic or mystery.